Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we're checking out the Make Believe Bundle from Make Believe Studios and Metric Halo. You may notice in this video there will be a couple wardrobe changes. That's because I had to record this over a couple nights. But it's just different shirts, different colors, not a big deal. But what we are going over are some awesome plugins. Now, let's get to the video. I'm actually really excited about this video. This is a bunch of plugins from my buddies over at Make Believe Studios as well as their partners at Metric Halo. Metric Halo has made some really amazing plugins in the past, some that we actually haven't seen on this channel. And they also make really, really top end converters. But now they've partnered with Make Believe Studios and have created a series of plugins for us to use. And the cool thing about these plugins is there's not much to do with them. You either like them or you don't. There's one that has no controls, nothing. There's a lot of plugins that we're gonna be going over. So let's dive straight into the DAW and take a look at what. Okay, here we are inside the session. And yes, it's crazy. There's a lot going on. But these are the plugins from Make Believe Studios and Metric Halo. And you may have guessed it, there's not a lot going on. The one that is probably easy to recognize as to what it's doing and what its purpose is, is the Sontech. This is a highly sought after parametric EQ. It's the first parametric EQ. And it's been approved by the person that made the first Sontech. The guys at Make Believe Studios and Metric Halo went to Burgess McNeil, showed him this plugin, and he himself, the creator of the parametric EQ, gave this plugin a big thumbs up. It follows what he did with the original hardware unit to the T, and he likes this. So if it's good enough for the guy that made parametric EQ, you better believe it's gonna be great for us because we don't have to spend a ton of money to get one. We can spend a fraction of the cost of a hardware unit and have nearly limitless capabilities because of our machines. Our only restriction is how strong your machine is. But that is the only one here that is very plain to see what it is. It's a three band parametric mastering equalizer, but it also has a low and top shelf. So it's sort of five band. The parametric is only three band. And you'll notice that there's actually shared controls, but we're gonna get into this in a, in a little bit. I'm just gonna show you what I've done. And we are gonna do follow-up videos where we get a deeper dive into some of these. If there's anyone after watching this video that you were really interested in checking out, let me know in the comments and I'll prioritize those ones. Okay, so we talked about the Sontech. It is a three band parametric mastering grade EQ. And now you have a plugin version of it. And you can probably see I'm not doing a lot. I think the strongest I'm doing on any band is one and a half dB of movement in any direction, either plus or minus. Then let's actually go down. Let's go underneath to the parallel processes. These were developed by the guys over at Make Believe Studios and they have different purposes. And it actually tells you right here, parallel process one, insert on snare, blend to taste. Parallel process two, insert on kick or snare, blend to taste and parallel process three and four is for your mid-range things. And it even tells you for guitar, synth, strings, piano, blah, 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 blah. Anything that lives in the mid-range. Try this on vocals too. That's in the mid-range. And there's two modes for this. There's insert, which is the way I have it now because that's exactly what I have it as. It's just direct on the bus for my kicks, my snares, or my guitars. But you can also change the mode to aux if you make a send and put this plugin on the return channel, the FX channel, the bus, whatever it's going to be in your DAW, then your blend is from the amount of send and where you have the fader on the return channel. I think that makes sense. Pretty sure it does. I hope you're following along. Now let's get into the plugin that has no controls. There is nothing you can do on this. You turn it on and if you like it, cool, move on to the next thing. If you don't, take it off and find a different limiter. But Kevin's limiter that is now right next to me, there's no controls. The only thing that's on here is bypass. When you throw it on, you're either going to like the result or it's not gonna be what you need right then and there. And you can revert to some other kind of limiter. There's other limiters out there, but Kevin's limiter is a no fuss, no muss kind of limiter. Put it on and if you like it, awesome. Then let's go above Kevin's limiter and check out good math. There's only a few people 
in the world that know what this plugin is doing. I am not one of them, but it's very easy controls and it's just doing processes. And I can't tell you what those processes are because I really don't know. But it's one of those things where you come over to the controls on the right-hand side, and these are usually zeroed out. So I'm just gonna do that real quick. And then there's this little mystery button inside the A. But by default, this is how it looks. Good math with three controls on the right and the mystery A hole. What you do with good math is you turn these controls, the numbers, either up or down in any direction, and it will start processing the signal in whatever way it does. And again, you don't know what it is. You have to use your ears and say, do I like this? Is it helping? Is it hurting? Do I need to stop doing this and maybe try one of the other controls? This thing is really ridiculous because it's so many different processes, but working subtly and in conjunction with each other. They're helping each other out. So as you dial one, the others are affected as well. At least that's how it sounds to my ear. And then the A-hole has just this magic kind of sparkle that happens. It just kind of opens things up a little. And we'll get into that in a little bit. So let me do everybody a favor and start closing some of these windows because there's far too many on the screen. Real quick, let's start with parallel process number one. This is on my snare bus, which is this one right here. And you can see it's last in my chain because we're blending the taste. This is doing parallel processing. So let me drop this all the way down and give you some of the snare, which is soloed. And then we'll just start to blend this in. And you guys tell me in the comments, what do you think it's doing? It's doing something. It's definitely parallel processing. There's some extra body as you really push into this thing uh, that I felt I didn't need. So I kind of scaled it back. And this is about where I had it before anyway. I'm just blending in the parallel processes of number one to my snare. Now let's move on to number two. With parallel processes number two, this is something you can put on your kick or your snare. In this instance, I've used it on my kick. So let me clear my solos and go to my kick drums and just solo these. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll blend this one into taste. So it's definitely processing as we were pushing really hard, we heard it was giving some extra snap. So to me, that sounds like it's doing some parallel compression, that very fast attack and a fast release. But I don't know if it's doing so much of that or if it's just like an EQ bump. But I do like it and I am blending it in to taste as suggested. Let's move to parallel process three, four. Here we are on my guitar bus. I'm going to drop this all the way down just like we did with the other ones and we'll start blending this in to taste. Cool, it's definitely processing those mids, kind of bringing it a little bit forward, adding a little bit of bite, and I'm okay with all of that, and we're blending it. Now let's get into one that we didn't actually show in the very beginning of this video. This is Espres, or Espress, or however you wanna say it. This started as an infamous impulse response, and now it's built into a plugin, and it tells you exactly what to do. Place after any amp sim, which I'm sure a bunch of you guys are using amp sims, or direct amp sound. If you take the output of your amp, you can record that and then put this, and it's an impulse response. So let's take a listen. I have two guitars that are DIs that do have an amp sim before them, and I'm going to bypass that and then go in, and it's gonna sound real nasty when it's in bypass.
So instantaneous impulse response of a very well captured cabinet. And this it goes way back to the Andy Sneap forums. If you're into rock or metal and you've been doing this for a while, you're probably aware of the Andy Sneap forums. This was floating around there for a long time. It went by a few different names, but now it's available as a plugin in the Make Believe Studios bundle. Okay, now we're gonna check out the Make Believe EQ. This is an extraordinarily powerful EQ that can do a lot of different things. I've gone over to my bass track, and even though I may have scrolled over, we are on my bass track right now. I'm just gonna solo this out, and let's take a listen. We have the EQ on. I'm just gonna throw it into bypass in the plugin itself. And now we're gonna listen to the bass sound that I have so far. But you may hear this as well. And there's something that I really don't like about the sounds so far, but the make-believe EQ is really gonna help us with this. So I don't know if you heard it, but after the first note, there's this really nasty mid-range resonance that I just can't stand. I wanna take care of it. So we're gonna use the Make Believe EQ. Now, this is a very interesting EQ. You can do some really surgical things with this, or you can make some nice broad strokes. And the cool thing is this has a analog circuit built in. Right on the bottom right corner, you'll see this sauce button. The sauce is this analog circuitry blended in. If you want it off, you can just click here and it takes it out of the path. But I kind of like what's going on and you'll see why in a second. Okay, so in its default state, you can see you start off with a bunch of different nodes just kind of in some key locations. Now, if we single click without moving on any one of these, we actually engage the EQ. They're all engaged, but we get the menu of each of these bands where we can do a whole bunch of different things. We can lock the frequency with this little lock here. We can change the style to band pass, high cut, shelving or high shelf, excuse me, just a standard parametric bell, low shelf, low cut, and a notch filter. There's also a couple more buttons up on top. We said the lock. When you click on the Q and anywhere within where you were selecting the EQ, now you're adjusting the width or the Q of that EQ band. And you can see there's two little nodes on the left and right that is showing us the Q or the bandwidth of this EQ band. Next to the Q is FF, and this is the frequency finder. When you engage this and then go ahead and go back to the frequency or the EQ band itself, you'll see it becomes a boost notch where we can sweep around and very quickly find our problematic area. Now there are some keyboard shortcuts that you can do with this as well. Right now I'm holding down command and it's going to allow me to engage or disengage this EQ band. If I switch over to option, I can now adjust only the Q. If I switch to control and all of these modifiers are on Mac, I then get into frequency finder mode. So immediately I'm in frequency finder. Then also you can do command and option and just start clicking on the band and you'll see it cycles through all of the different shapes. So parametric, low shelf, high shelf, high cut, low cut, and band pass. And then clicking again just brings you right back to standard parametric. As you're working through your EQ, you can grab anything and just double click and it'll turn that one band off, double click again to turn it back on. Then if you want to eliminate a band completely, you do the three finger click or the fat finger click. It goes by a bunch of different names, but you're gonna hit command, option, and control, and then you can click on any band and it just removes it from play. If you wanna add one in, same thing, three finger click, and you're adding those bands right back in. Now we've gone over the controls very quickly. Let's dial in something on our bass. If you remember, we had that nasty whistle. So let's go ahead and we're just gonna grab this EQ band right here and let's go into frequency finder. And I'm gonna click on frequency finder mode and then we'll sweep around to find that really nasty resonance. right there, 1.22K, and I'm just gonna cut this thing out. I don't need to go that drastic, so I'll just punch in minus 12, that should be fine. And now let's do a very quick listen of before and after. Here it is, before.
So you can hear it's ringing and it's taking off. Now let's actually dial in some sounds as well. I'm gonna grab the next band and give myself a little bit of bite and just kind of squeeze this in a little. I'm going to remove all of my super lows. So now I'm gonna hold Command and Option and just kind of click through until I get the low cut. And I just wanna get rid of all of the stuff on bottom. This is a bass guitar, so I don't wanna to go too crazy. Maybe here around 55, this is fine. We're gonna add a little bit of body and we're gonna scoop out some of those mids. Let's just kind of do something like this, get the mud out of there, but have the body, you know, and we'll listen to this in the mix as well. But this gives us a very decent starting point. So let's do this. We'll throw it into bypass. And then after a couple bars, we'll put it right back in. Cool, we've dialed in some bass sounds. Yes, we've done it in solo. This isn't something you're really supposed to do, but it's fine. Now I'm gonna show you the sauce. On the left and right side are your input and output sliders. And on the bottom of the left side, you have the link button. When it's white, it's engaged. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive signal into this EQ, which has sauce engaged. So I'm going to purposely overdrive the analog circuit and give myself a little bit more distortion and a little bit more bite. This I'm gonna do in the mix. I'm the one who makes you feel safe. Come with me and I'll take you away. Escape. real nice, nasty bass tone. Okay, now let's talk the Sontech. I've dialed in some very basic settings here, just kind of trying to open up the entire song. Everything we're gonna be doing from here on out is on my mix bus. You're gonna be listening to everything. All the guitars, bass, drums, and all of our heavy vocals are now all going through the Sontech through the mix bus. So I'm gonna start with it in bypass, and I'm gonna make sure that anything after it, which is good math and Kevin's limiter, are not on, and now you'll only hear what the Sontech is doing. One thing I will show you about the Sontech that I'll definitely dive into deeper in the dedicated video for this plugin is if you right click or double click on the Sontech S, it gives you a bunch of different options. And if you show transfer function, you wanna see what your EQ is doing, that's what you want, show transfer function, and it shows you the curve. This is my curve that I've dialed in for this song. Extraordinarily subtle, and the top end shelf comes way down, all the way down to about 2K, probably even starts at about 1.5. And it just very musically, very gently, just kind of goes up from there. But let's get this back out of here and listen to the Sontech. So we'll listen to everything before, and then we'll engage it a couple bars in. So even with just a couple small movements, again, I said earlier, the most I'm doing on any one of these bands is a dB and a half of change. I have a high shelf that starts at 8K, but you saw when we showed the transfer function, that actually stretches all the way down to about 1.5 is where it starts, 1.5K, definitely at 2K, but it's this very, very gradual shelf for our top end. Same thing with the low end. I have this all the way down at 50 hertz. That's what these controls are here. I'm only adding a dB and it's definitely adding some extra beef. It's bringing the top open and opening things up. And everything in the mids at 240 hertz, at 700 hertz and at 5.7K, small moves. And the selectors on top are the bandwidth cues because this is a parametric. So you can actually adjust how wide or narrow the curves are for the three different bands. And we also have everything linked. We can change that. Again, this is all gonna go in deeper depth in the dedicated video. So now that we've opened things up with Sontech, let's do some additional processing with good math. This is following Sontech directly after in the chain. Here's the Sontech, then right into good math. Uh, I'm gonna reset everything right back to zero and we'll dial some stuff in real quick. I'm the one who makes you feel safe. Come with me and I'll take you away. Escape out your fear every day. I want what you need. To be free. To be free. To be free. Take me from this misery. Yeah. 
Are we getting a little bit of a volume bump? Yes. Am I against it? Not exactly. Whatever it's doing, and again, there's very few people in this world who know what this is doing, but whatever it's doing, it's helping enhance and bring the song forward, kind of giving me a little bit of aggression, but not a lot. It's opening things up. I like the little lift we get when we engage the a-hole, and it's just kind of opening things up, and we haven't done a lot. Now, these controls only go to three in either direction, but it's definitely kind of helping the song. I don't think it's hurting it. And let's play everything safe, and we'll follow good math immediately with Kevin's limiter. I'm gonna engage this, but throw it into bypass. And yes, once again, there will be a little bit of a volume bump, but I'm either gonna like it or I'm not. There's no controls on this. So just listen. Here is where we really need to use our ears. Ready? little bit of a volume bump, little bit of bringing things forward. We may be slightly tricked because of that volume bump, but I definitely felt like my mids just kind of pushed towards me more and came out of the speakers. And I like that. I want that. I want it to be like the guy is in the room when you're listening to this or singing straight to you if you're listening on earbuds. So there you go. Those are the plugins in the Make Believe Bundle brought to you by Make Believe Studios and Metric Halo. These are on sale now. They're available. So use the link down in the description if you want to pick up any one of these or all of them. I want to thank the guys over at Make Believe Studios for sending these over and letting me be a beta tester when these were first being developed. That was a lot of fun. So thanks, guys. Before we end everything, I do want to know, what did you like? What didn't you like? What do you think was going on with some of these plugins? Because a lot of them are mysteries. Let me know down in the comments, and we'll check in with the guys at Make Believe. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. If you're looking to help grow the community, join the Discord. There's a link down in the description. If you're interested in mixing or lesson information, check out timflansbaum.com. And if you have a question, ask it in the comments, and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.